change. Let's go beyond just FX, though, to the wider markets. Joining us now to discuss is Ryan Lamont. He is NeoVision Wealth Management CEO. Ryan, thank you so much for being with us. Just a few minutes ago, Creedy and I were talking about how far below expectations 2022 actually looks like it's going to turn out. It was a far worse year for equity markets here in the U.S. and around the world than initially anticipated. How much worse do things have to get before they get better, in your view? Hi, Kaylee. Thanks for having me. So again, I look back to January 2022. Things looked positive. We looked all enthusiastic and no one expected what was about to happen in 2022, especially coming out of COVID. So the world reserves surprises sometimes. Fundamentally speaking, we do expect 2023 to be, uh, well, worse than 2022 on three grounds, geopolitical, financial and macroeconomic. Geopolitical, you mentioned it, Taiwan, North Korea, there's Iran as well. Uh, China, U.S., uh, financial compressed earnings. We should see more and more compressed earnings into 2023. Uh, that's on the financial front. On macroeconomic, inflation fights usually weaken the economy and slow it down. So we should see a macroeconomic slowdown, particularly in the U.S. Well, okay. Go ahead, Kaylee. Well, I was just going to say, if that's the case in that kind of not so great environment where you're what you're describing, Ryan, where do you want to hide? Is there any pockets of fair value where you think it is safe to be? Absolutely. No, the good thing is that it's not the end of the world. It's something we as professional portfolio managers know how to deal with and we know how to navigate. First of all, cash is king. The cost of capital is back. Time value of money is back. We can have a 12 month deposit at 5% today. This is our baseline revenue. And then we can add to it emerging markets. Emerging markets are back. China should be back. There are multiple emerging markets that are coming back. The Gulf Corporation countries, which are oil exporters, Exporting back to the dollar are quite a positive story. There's private equity and you have commodities. Commodities will be back as well on the back of China. There are the precious metals as well, gold. So we are quite positive on gold on the back of uh, central bank buying uh, recently. Well, Ryan, when we talk about the equity market specifically, it almost feels like 2022 was one where the equity market took the cue of the bond market or of the commodity market. In other words, if oil went higher, stocks went lower. If the yields went higher, stocks went lower. Do you see the equity market again taking those same cues in 2023 or will there be a different leader? Well, I think the leader into 2023 will be driven by earnings, by company earnings and macroeconomic numbers. I think 2023 will be different than 2022 in that respect. That economic slowdown, and we should see some slowing economic numbers, higher unemployment, etc., et and lower earnings uh, will be the drivers. 2022 was quite particular and very hard correlation between the bond market or fixed income in general and equities. Even the 20 year treasury has completely underperformed stocks, which is quite unique. And I think it's the first time in history this happens. Well, it's interesting that you talk a little bit about the emerging market complex as well, because I wonder how much of the equity strength that is perhaps expected in 2023 relative to 2022 is really just a, fu a function of fund flows. The idea here that nothing is at, or will be weathering this uh, recession as well as American assets, and therefore that there is no alternative idea kind of comes back into the forefront. How much of it is going to be a function of fund flow? Well, fund flow will always remain here. Let's not forget that almost 40% of the U.S. market cap, uh, cap is composed of retail investors. This has reached a peak during COVID when you had lots of retail traders. This will continue to flow. There's the FOMO as well, fear of missing out that will continue. And this is what's, what's actually supporting the S&P 500 today. That's why the S&P 500 is not at 3,500. However, as economic numbers um, are lower, as uh, earnings earnings are lower, we suspect flows will go elsewhere. Today, there is an alternative. You can get a 12 month deposit for 5%. Well, if we could zero in in particular within emerging markets as well to China specifically, which now has basically undone the last remaining COVID zero measure with releasing the quarantine requirement for inbound travelers, massive reopening of a massive economy, the second largest economy in the world, Ryan. How are you factoring that into your thesis for next year? 
that's part of our emerging market portfolio, stock picking, choosing stocks. However, this doesn't come without any risks because let's not forget that COVID now is hitting China quite hard. We have millions and millions of, of infections each day. Uh, we will see that as, as, as well, and this will impact the economy. However, we do see it as a positive net-net because then China will move away from COVID just like the rest of the world, and this is a positive story. And that's why we started buying into Chinese stocks as soon as China started giving hints about reopening, and this is happening. Um, another winner are commodities. So commodities are correlated with Chinese reopening, and that's why we see a positive story in commodities as well. Commodities got, got completely hammered uh, over the past year, and now is the comeback. Ryan, it sounds like you're saying that this Chinese reopening is, at the end of the day, inflationary. Is there a case to be made that it's disinflationary? I don't think so. It is inflationary. Um, for the rest of the world. Uh, the U.S. Uh, will also suffer from that, some imported inflation. The the House passed the $1.65 trillion uh, package a few days ago. This is also inflationary. We do not think that the inflation story is over yet. Uh, traditionally, macroeconomically speaking, high single-digit inflation rarely comes in one wave. There is always a second wave once wages start catching up with inflation. So the inflation story is not yet over where we uh, were afraid. All right, Ryan Lamont, NeoVision Wealth Management CEO, inflation, the defining story for 2022, likely will still be one of the primary stories of 2023. Thank you so much.